2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Tuesdays is the time we have a look at everything that's happening in the world of politics. We do that with our Professor of Politics right here, Jim Jost. Jim, uh, are we going on holidays or something? We're going to escape the winter by heading to the to sort of the South Pacific. Is that what we're doing today? Only in uh, spirit. Only in spirit. So we're Only going there, but it's mark. no holiday. <laughs> No, what's happening is the um, Pacific Island Forum is um, being held in Tuvalu and uh, Australia's just announced, or the Prime Minister's just announced, that Australia's going to give $500 million over five years um, to the Pacific Island nations to help um, them develop uh, climate change strategies, largely around renewable energies, uh, renewable um, facilities and other climate change um, activities or mitigation activities and all that sounds really good except there's a couple of um why is there always a fly in the ointment (laughs) there's one is that this is not new money as far as the australian government's concerned this is just money that is redirected it's coming out of an exist the existing aid budget so the aid budget is not being increased to allow this to happen so other parts of the aid budget will have to be um, curtailed in order to make this happen but the Pacific Island um, nations aren't really that wrapped up in this particular um, package. Yes, it will be a help for some activities, but for the Pacific Island nations, but particularly Tuvalu um, and, and other smaller um, nations, they're more worried about rising sea levels. So at a certain point, and Tuvalu is perhaps uh, the one that's most pressing on this at, at present, that they anticipate that by the end of this century, they're likely to be underwater, uh, which is not a, an exciting, it's a very um, depressing prospect for them. So the idea that, you know, they're going to have um, uh, facilities to create, you know, re- renewable electricity um, doesn't seem to be, you know, all that attractive if, if the sea levels are going to rise. Part of the issue, and the Fijian Prime Minister has made this quite clear, that he expects and would expect that Australia and New Zealand being um, much more heavily industrialised and much higher carbon emitters to do something more about their emissions. And one of the things that they um, are quite concerned about is that Australia is doing a bit of a sleight of hand with its statements about um, carbon emissions. So it's saying it's going to meet its Paris targets and isn't that a good thing? Yes. However, the way we are meeting, are going to meet those Paris targets is by using um, the credits that we've gained from the Kyoto Kyoto Protocol. And what that basically means is that we don't actually um, stop emitting or reduce our emissions on paper. We take the um, credits that we've been given from Kyoto and move it across to the Paris Accords, and it means we meet the Paris Accords. But we haven't actually reduced any real emissions. All we've done is a paper transaction that shows that we've met um, an artificial target. So a bit, a bit of a three-card Monty there, and the whole thing seems like some sort of cryptocurrency in, in a way. Th- there's also been some rumblings about the, the, this part of the aid going to specific island nations, that, and there's thoughts that the, we keep doing this to try and keep the influences from the likes of China at bay. Is there well, a lot in this? There, there is some something in that. I mean, part of that, Mark, is that um, Australia perceives China's growing... Um, uh, economic and um, global power has having a greater influence or moving into the Pacific. And, you know, the irony here is that Australia, by giving the aid, that, you know, can say, look, we're helping the Pacific nation and shouldn't they be thankful for us and uh, we're actually friends of the Pacific nations and etc. <laughs> From what the way I understand it is that um, because we're not seen as taking seriously the climate change issue and are continuing to be a major exporter of coal and a major um, generator of carbon emissions, that we're not actually rolling them back, that the Pacific Island nations don't necessarily see us as um, perhaps as genuine as we need to be. Now, that perception can then undermine our potential for influence and our ability to counter what the Australian government might perceive as Um, China's growing influence. So for the Pacific Island nations, it's possible that Australia's um, less than transparent and 
um, um, what's the best word here? The um, basically honest approach, um, our less than honest approach here, might mean that the Pacific Island nations turn more to China because at least with China, um, there is some evidence that China is trying to cut back its emissions. Whether you know, given the, the nature of the China's Chinese economy, um, means that their perhaps attempts to cut back are not as um, uh, having as rapid effect as they might like, but China is very much aware of this and is making a fair bit of noise about how it's trying to counter um, the effects of climate change. Also, we've got countries like Chile on the other side of the Pacific with a genuine interest in what goes on in the Pacific, also wanting to have some influence and whatever um, with Pacific Island nations. So we have a situation where it's not just the influence of China, there's also other countries, other um, more industrialised countries like Chile, and there's even um, um, some moves from Norway to have some influence or try to get some influence with the Pacific Island nations. So the, the, the thing that's going to emerge here at the moment is that the Pacific Island Forum is going to try and have a consensus-based statement to take to New York to another um, climate change conference um, and meeting to try and do something about climate change specifically um, within the Pacific area. Whether Australia and New Zealand will come on board with that, um, I think that's going to be really interesting because the Pacific Island nations are quite adamant that Australia is not doing enough in terms of its own um, tackling of climate change and I doubt whether that they will accept Australia's attempts to water down what they want because as far as um, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu is concerned, the Prime Minister of Fiji and most of the other island nations in the Pacific, they are really adamant that the Western nations need to be doing much, much more um, because the impact on them, that's to say on the island nations, is far, far greater than it's going to be on, say, Australia over the next 100 years. All right, Jim, kind of brings us back to where we started. Uh, a lot to think about there, and uh, thank you so much as always. We'll ca catch you next Tuesday. Yep, thank you, Mark. Our Professor of Politics, Jim Jost, right here on 2NURFM 103.7.